How do you get your guys prepared for such a big game like this? Rivalry, 22,000 people. I mean, what do you do? Say it again, I'm sorry. What do you, uh, as far as preparing, no, 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 this one here. I mean, just the, the atmosphere. How do you, what do you say to your guys before the game? Well, I, I said something I, I've not said to them. I said, look, guys, I don't know how many more Kentucky Louisville games. I hope I coach five, seven, eight more of them. But you got to really enjoy it and have fun because you're not going to see this experience too much when you look at college basketball on the screen sometimes. You, you don't see this type of thing. you got to really, really enjoy it. And uh, they did tonight. They had a lot of fun tonight. They enjoyed it. Uh, and I think Kentucky's a tough team. It's a quite an impressive performance by them coming up the North Carolina game. What made Daniel so effective tonight? I, I just felt everybody was aggressive on offense. We've been in the past aggressive on defense, but I thought we were aggressive on offense. Because you talk a lot about rebounding this year. Jalen, that offensive rebound at the end was one of the biggest ones. We, we did a great job of blocking out. We've, we've kept shots every single practice, trying to make it better and better. But um, you know, we just kept in timeouts talking about the Baylor game, how we didn't execute when we got a little tired. And, Mango was a great leader in the timeout to do a terrific job. Coach, talk about the strategy of keeping De'Aaron Fox from going downhill in transition. It seems like you guys did a good job of kind of discouraging that break. It's not easy. We, we walled up because now you put Monk on a wing, and, and it's not easy. And at the end of the game, there's four shooters in the game. Uh, but we, you have to, to keep him out of the fast break, the key is you have to take great shots. And we were getting great shots, and that's the key. That, then you play good transition defense. If you take a bad shot, they'll make you pay. Rick, did you do anything in particular on Monk? We, we shadowed him. Uh, we tried to deny him. Uh, every time he came off the screen, and said, you know, let's just keep the ball out of his hands with somebody else. And, you know, I felt he was going to drive a little bit more tonight because guys, when they come off a 47-point game, know that people were getting his jock. So we, we tried to play that as well. Briscoe puts a lot of pressure on you and drives. Fox puts a lot of pressure on you. They're a, they're a tremendous team. They really are a great team, and obviously they're going to have a terrific season. <coughs> Quentin is not the most physically gifted guy. How did he compensate for that against a team that has a lot He's of... He's very, you know, in 11 games, he had one steal. Tonight he had two. So <laughs> Quentin is a very good offensive basketball player. Okay, He's a very good offensive player. And we were able to put him on Briscoe and put different people on, on Fox and, and Monk. And, you know, he, he knows how to play angles. He knows how to play it. But he's not a bad defensive player. Guys with length would bother him, but he also bothers guys on, on the other end of the floor. So you may lose something at defense, but you gain it on offense. Rick, you've been in the unique position of uh, being the head coach of both of these elite programs. From that coaching perspective, what makes this rivalry the best in college basketball? Well, I said this earlier. I never, when I first came to Lexington, I, you know, the Yankees don't like the Red Sox, Red Sox don't like the Yankees, but they take it to a new level. And I didn't quite, two of my really good friends, Martin McMacken and Bill Kiteley, they would get all choked up in tears. You don't understand what Louisville's like. So I, I really didn't understand. Now, Kaywood was normal, so I could talk to him a little bit about it. But those other two were normal. And what, what makes it better, I think, the best rivalry, and you can say that Carolina and Duke, uh, because it's in the ACC, what makes this rivalry so good is the fan base, not the teams. Because if you look at Duke, I don't know the exact percentage, but I bet 20 30% are probably from New York, New Jersey, California. Same thing with North Carolina. So they got different here. Everybody's on vacation, every single TV. We're the number one market for television in America, college basketball, and the draft. And that's because we've got 450,000 Kentucky fans here as well. So we got a great market for TV, and, and everybody lives for this game. Everybody in Carolina Duke doesn't live for that game because you also got Wake when they're good, you got NC State. This is it for us. We have no professional teams. And this is it. And they've, they've dominated us for, for a while now, so it's good to get a victory. Rick, you guys did a great job with your execution and the offensive rebounding. Is there another element that will put you over the top of being a really good offense? I just think that we have nobody back that average double figures. I just think they need to get comfortable and move the basketball like they did tonight. And, you know, now we got Virginia where every possession is life and death. And then you go to Indiana, and all they do is drive and shoot threes and good low. But so, and then you got uh, Notre Dame at Notre Dame, where you know they just 
they kill you with prayers the entire night. And they get <laughs> <laughs> so the ACC is very difficult, but for us tonight, you know, getting, uh, we were hoping to get a little bit of a run here and get a few wins with this schedule coming in, this gauntlet coming in, and um, and we got one tonight. But we got it by playing really good basketball. And that's important. How difficult is the challenge of, of facing Bam out of Iowa, and what was the what was the game plan? Well, obviously, it wasn't to uh, back up and let him dunk on you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the thing, the reason I like their team so much is they put, they have so many different ways to put pressure on you. Monk with the three, Fox going downhill, Briscoe weaving in and out, Willis with the three, and then Bam in the low post. There's so many ways that they can hurt you, and now the way they play up and down the court like that, you, you've got to, if you don't take great shots, you're going to lose the game. You have to take great shots. As much as, as this game means to your fans, do you feel at all unburdened that you've ended the dominance that you talked about? Well, I have to go to Miami tonight to be with the family for um, uh, for Christmas holidays because my children are down there and have to go there. And um, I just got a boat for the first time, a small little boat. And uh, I think I would have gone out fishing and then called Kenny and said, you take over. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of... Look, they dominated us. You know, if somebody said, well, you played uh, all these games and it's been decided by less than 10 points, I said, I said that's that's not the way it works in, in, in basketball. If you lose, you lose, whether it's two points or not. So we played good basketball against them, but look, they've had, and I say this, and I, and I, so I don't say it in victory because I've said it in defeats. There are a number of programs, Kentucky's Kentucky. I mean, and I don't mean to mean John when I say this, but nobody's recruited like John in the business. If you look at the NBA right now, you got Carl Towns, you got Anthony Davis, you got John Wall, you got they play great at the next level. So he's evaluated great. But I knew him when he, he wasn't a great recruiter and we played him in the final four when I was at Kentucky and he beat us early in the year. So he's an outstanding teacher of the game, but sometimes when you get all these great players you know, they, they don't think, he puts those guys in areas where they can score. And he's done a great job for a long, long time. And the talent that he assembles, the thing that's impressive to me is he doesn't miss much on evaluation. Like Poitras got hurt, uh, but he doesn't miss much evaluating. We all miss a lot in evaluating. He doesn't miss much. When he thinks a guy can play, he can really play. And Duke's in the same scenario now. And um, I'm hoping we get, uh, we, we've had a great recruiting class. So, yeah, it's 